We need it quiet. Should have brought my camera. First item is the uh, consent agenda. Did anybody have a chance to go through it? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All right. Um, but do we need to discuss anything further? Okay, all four. Aye. Aye. And all against? All right. Uh, the next section is visitor comments. But before we get into those, um, I just want to make sure everybody understands that um, there's three minutes. There's a, a, a you know, there's a number of names here. Um, and I don't really want to hear anybody talking bad about anybody. You know, any individuals or any groups of individuals. Uh, so please be careful with how you phrase things and what you say. That's all I'm asking. Um, so, Jeremy. 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 Okay. Uh, yes, LaPointe. Uh, Jeremy LaPointe, 72 Street. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jeremy LaPointe. I have an 11 year old daughter in fifth grade. She is a 55 pound tiny little thing, and I'd like to keep her innocent for one more year, please. I've heard the argument from both sides, and I have a couple of opinions of my own. My concerns about moving is number one, the obvious age gap from 11 years old to 19 years old, and whether they should be put together in high school. Well, if none of us in this auditorium are experts on the matter, I suggest we use actual scientific studies rather than speculation. What are these studies, do you ask? Well, a study from Duke University asked the exact same question and found that sixth graders that stayed in a grade school setting have higher standardized testing results, better attention spans, and less behavioral problems. So that in itself seems all the reason not to make a move, but I'll continue. Number two, we as a community voted and agreed to allow an override for a tax increase for a renovation and addition on our grade school for pre-K pre -K through sixth grade attendance. Prior to this proposal, there must have been some type of feasibility study. I'm told the formula went something like uh, registered attendance plus 20%. Yet within nine, within nine months of the school being finished, we were hearing talk about this move due to a lack of space. So you, the administrators, are telling us, the community, the taxpayers, that the population of Grammy for children from 5 to 11 has grown approximately 30% in less than a year. I'm sorry, but I find that very hard to believe. What seems much more likely is that someone made a, a big mistake and the screams incompetence. If that's not the case, there's plenty of room for our sixth graders, but the real reason for this proposal, proposed move is to allow for more school choice for other towns, as that would help subsidize the budget, putting our sixth graders last behind money and children from other communities. One defense I've heard from other parents who had sixth graders that became seventh graders felt that their children found the transition from grade school to high school to be easy. But let's be realistic. This is not sixth graders becoming seventh graders and finally making it to the high school. This is fifth graders becoming sixth graders that are going to be segregated from the entire school for no less than six months while they use partially demo demolished bathrooms and have a segregated lunchtime. Another sales pitch I've heard is about more opportunity for extracurricular activities. Yet, I have talked to teachers in the high school that tell me these activities are already struggling due to lack of participation, lack of interest, and most importantly, lack of volunteers. In my opinion, I think it's best to leave our sixth graders where they were proposed to be in the contract that we as taxpayers voted on. If anyone should go to the high school, I believe it should be the pre-K, as they are far younger and most unlikely to be manipulated, bullied, or influenced by the high school kids. In fact, I propose that the high school kids could be used as a resource to help take care of these young ones. In fact, it could give some hands-on experience for students planning on, uh, uh, to become teachers, counselors, and having a career in early childhood development. <clears throat> I know the problem with moving the pre-K to the high school is there's no bathrooms for the pre-K students. So I propose that I, myself, being a licensed general contractor, would bid the construction of these bathrooms at my cost. Not using state money, we would remove the state mandate union work and the bureaucracy that comes with commercial construction. I'm sure I could complete these bathrooms at a fraction of the going rate. I have no problem volunteering my time to better our community. I just ask that everyone think of our children when voting on this proposal. I personally believe we should focus on every child in every classroom every day, not every dollar of every budget every year. Thank you. 
to eat. Yeah, if you don't mind. Linda? <laughs> that was easy, Linda. Uh, Gabe. Thanks. Gabe Pula, 51 West Street. I've got two children in East Middle School. So after five months of attending these school committee meetings, listening, uh, speaking with others, doing my own research, I haven't changed my views on the proposed move of sixth grade into the high school. I just don't think it's a good idea to share and busing uh, or have an 11 year old pass in the halls um, with 18 year olds whether they be supervised or not, because I've witnessed high schoolers that act out in front of faculty, right in front of their face, um, in my livelihood. And um, I've asked hundreds of town residents in Granby about their thoughts about moving sixth grade into the high school, if they thought it seemed reasonable, it came with a neutral approach. I found that I wasn't alone. I speak for the people that don't attend these meetings. For example, I speak for that young mother I spoke to that has five children and works second shift at the hospital. She told me she'd like to come, but she can't. And she'd rather see the preschool at the high school rather than see her sixth grader um, daughter move into the high school. I'm a voice also for the disabled elderly taxpayer that agree with me, but can't make the meetings as well. And they think it, 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 it too is a bad idea. I'm third generation in town, my kids are fourth generation. I want nothing more than my kids to stay in Granby school system because it's been excellent since day one. Watching my kids read for the first time, watching them progress each day as time goes by, I just have to credit the faculty. It's been excellent. In saying that, I request that all, or most, or 100% efforts of the school committee and leadership to plan, should be to plan improvements to the high school structurally. So decreasing enrollment either stops or slows down. And that people in town would have a lot more confidence after that 7th grade point. I believe we should not build a new high school because our taxes are already at an all-time high and I'm hearing that from a lot of town residents. Uh, renovation and maintenance is the key, and pride in what we already own for facilities is, I think that's important. Uh, I do not want to see us regionalize either down the line, uh, side note, um, because I have visions of, of an improved uh, Granby Junior Senior High School. And um, yeah, it would be amazing that, you know, after a lot of work, maybe five years from now, we'd have the same capacity issue at the high school that we're having here at East Meadow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Kim. 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 Kim Goldsmith, Taylor Street, Grand Mass, two thirty nine. Um, I had emailed everybody individually and hoping that I wouldn't have to speak tonight, but a couple of things came up, so I just I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, we've been trying to inquire about the um, total reserve fund it's been called I'm not sure what what other names it can be used on but we did go and meet with Chris Martin this morning and we did find out that there's a total of six hundred and twenty seven dollars six hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars in an account that can be used by the school um, I'm hoping that in knowing that that there may be some improvements that we can do using some of that money I know there were talks about, you know, looking into doing things at the high school. Not all of the prices were found and ramps and things like that in the common room. Um, none of the pricing was come up, but now that I know that number and everybody else knows that number, you know, in hopes that maybe that would be something that we could look into rather than moving sixth grade. Um, as I was coming here this evening, I received a text message from a student at Granby Senior High School that couldn't come tonight. I have permission from her and her parents to read her text message to you guys. She wanted me to be a voice for her. She said, all, and I mean nearly all students at the Granby High School do not agree at all with this happening. It's a very small school with little room. Although there is classrooms, there are no more locker room and hall room. The hallways get extremely crowded and you usually are late to class because of it. That's unhealthy for sixth grade to come to the high school because all seventh grade was even lied to about not being running into seniors in the halls or any upperclassmen. Sixth grade could get snotty and think that they are much older than they are, as well as because the school holds pep rallies, which all grades participate in, and all come together. So yes, they would not be separated. All students and even teachers disagree with this. If the preschool were to come into the school, it would give upperclassmen a chance to volunteer and work with children. Preschool could easily get different time periods and won't worry about being bullied, unlike sixth grade would. Yes, it's not bad bullying, but there's always teasing. It just won't be a healthy place for sixth grade. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Her name is Nadia Champagne. And she's in eighth grade. 
Uh, Robin. Yes. My name is Robin LaMorter, 33 New Ludlow Road. I am not only a resident, I'm an employee, long time of the Granby Public Schools. I am the president of the Granby Educators Association. Today I overheard a conversation and I am appalled. I do not have an opinion whether the sixth grade moves or whether the sixth grade stays here. And Mike, if you tell me to stop, I will totally understand why. But I do have an opinion, overhearing a conversation of an employee who got a text message. And the text message was a picture of someone, an employee, out front doing a morning duty. Who is this and what do they do? What right do you have to ask that question just because you're opposed to the sixth grade moving? That is a violation of the employees here. I, I just, I'm appalled and so hurt that you would stoop so low as to question what somebody's position here is and who they work with. I have also heard that some people have had text messages over um, the school of choice children that we take and that they are problem children and we need more employees for that. That is totally wrong. I can honestly tell you that there are children in this school system that require one-to-one -one paraprofessionals that are town residents. So before you question where the money is spent and misappropriation and taking in school of choice, you really need to get your facts right. And please, please do not, under the falsehood of dropping your children off, take photographs of employees and text them to an employee here asking who they are, what their job is, and who they work with. Thank you. Sorry. Stephanie? Megan. 
Um, my concerns with Crescent Street, um, I have a seventh grade son and a fifth grade daughter. I'm sure the committee is sick of hearing from me by now, so I won't um, go over the millions of emails that I've sent. Um, I just I just think we talk a lot about numbers and money and capacity and big fancy words like that, but for me it comes down to the kids and the social, emotional welfare of our kids. And I really think that it's beneficial for these kids to stay where they are in sixth grade. Um, where developmentally they belong, where um, I don't want to go so far as to say they'd be traumatized in the high school, but let's keep them where they belong, where the kids, um, where they're with peers of their own age group, where they're um, being supported, and let's not push them to be older kids than he's going to be. Allison. Yeah, Hi, Allison, by Pleasant Street. Um, I'm not only a parent, I'm a social worker, so um, I just get concerned with the sixth grade at that age, psychologically, social, um, economically, uh, developmentally, that's a really critical age. And to do a huge change into a high school in a kind of makeshift kind of way, I feel would be detrimental. Um, and I worry about that. Not only professionally, but I've also looked up some studies as well, and there was a recent study in September of 2019 of 573 public schools, and they compared test, um, standardized testing in math and reading over a three-year time period, and it showed that the passing rates of these tests were significantly higher for the sixth grade, that sixth graders that stayed in elementary school versus those who went to like the middle school or high school setting. Um, so it's kind of a growing body of research that um, that children that experience a school transition during early adolescence is associated with detrimental outcomes. Sixth grade students moving out of elementary school are more likely to exhibit lower academic competency, more disciplinary problems, and poorer attendance than those who stay in elementary schools. Um, so it, the, also the end of the study, and I don't have to email it, says that most of the study research shows that staying in elementary schools for longer associated with higher student attainment, they achieve better tests in reading and math, when they stay in elementary school. So I think there's some objective studies out there. I tried to look for both sides as a social worker. I tried to look at both sides, and I couldn't find anything positive of a transition from sixth grade into, um, into a middle school, high school type situation. So, thank you. Okay. That's it. Oh, Seamus? Seamus. Hi. Seamus Connolly, 21 Fair of the Road, Grandy. <coughs> I, would like, I would also like to say that my comments on, I was the first one that spoke at the last meeting, were a little bit harsh, and I'd like to apologize to each and, er, each and every one of you. Mr. Peters, especially to you. Um, and Mr. Simpson, Cheryl Patton, I am very sorry about that comment. I may not agree with this, with this, with this, I may not agree with sending the sixth graders to Granby. However, however, these past few meetings have given me memories of when I left East Meadow to Grandy to Grandy High. I I do not I do not I I would ask the committee would re, would consider keeping the kids at East Meadow for a year for the kids at six the kids are in fifth grade now at East Meadow. Give you know what I mean. Give 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 Gabe give me Bernie Goldsmith a chance you know a chance to figure something out a chance. To figure out, figure out, you know, ways to keep, you know, to keep these kids here. Let us come up with it. I could come up with a roof at the Granby High School in 2018. I'm pretty sure if we put our minds together as parents and as former students or alumni, as I am, we could, we could come up with a, you know, a, maybe starting. Maybe you guys could approve of another nonprofit organization that would not put our tax dollars at work. We. I, I fundraise all the time, you know, during the basketball games. So when you see me there over the years, I we could we could fund we could put in a lot of fundraising work over the next year. I would ask you at the bottom of my heart, I will not claim any. I will not. This is not a victory for any of the parents. This is a victory for the kids and future generations of this town. And I wanted to stay that way. I love this town. I love this community. You know and. I just would. I just do not want to see these kids have to go to GHS a year, a year, a year earlier than traditionally known to me. I'm not sure about the rest of you guys. Who, or maybe, I'm not sure about Jim, but Mr. Beaches, of course. So, 
And I, in either way, I think I'd like, also like to make a shout out to Mr. Taylor. He's been, I heard he's gotten a promotion. You <laughs> hire the right person. <laughs> and finally, finally, we are dealing, we are dealing with town increases. We are dealing with an increase in residents. Randy's always had an increase in residents since the 30s and 40s, since Westover, Quaggan Reservoir, 20 years earlier, 10 years earlier. I just would like us to keep in mind, you know, if local contractors can, local contractors could put a very low price and they do it themselves. It doesn't involve taxpayer or state funded money. I'd be all for it. Um, I also would like, I also would like to say that, that I am, that I am having a, that I would like to be approved for a fundraiser uh, to sell Grandy Rams t-shirts and fundraise for the East Meadow petition left on and you guys would get 25% of the profits to 40%. 40% of the profits. If you guys would really fund each one of us to do that, that would be that would be very fabulous. I know I wouldn't have all the details, so the map's a little bit slow, but I mean the school school record would say that, even though I think it's about last year. But I would love I would love the opportunity to raise some money. <coughs> I know you guys are doing a well, good job, and it would have made an Emory, uh, an Emory, you would have, you would have, you would have our vote if you vote no on keep, and yes, if you vote yes on keeping the sixth graders at GHS. You leave it out on your spin. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so moving on to student representative report, Marcus. All right, so I have had a couple of people come to me and ask about if there's any plans to do any renovations to the student parking lot over at Granby Junior Senior High School. There can, I know the budget's sitting right behind me. <laughs> um, Maybe it's in there. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to throw that out there that there is concern from the community of wanting to repair it. All right. Do you want an answer or no? <laughs> it's in the budget. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, thank you for that. Um, That's it. That's it. Thank you. Anybody have anything they want to ask Marcus before we let him off the hook? He's staying tonight. <laughs> not going anywhere. Can, right. I, can I ask a question as a student representative? Mm -hmm. um, is there a general sense from the students, um, pro or con? Can we ask them that? Just, just for a heartbeat on what you guys are thinking as students. I have, I've gotten a whole bunch of different answers. I've gotten. I don't Both. care. Bring whoever over. <laughs> yeah. Just let's get this going. So kind bring, of makes don't sense. you dare bring them over here. Yeah. Bring the little kids over. Bring the sixth grades over. Okay. Don't bring anybody over. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all up to. Yeah. There's no one solid answer. I can't say that there's like one definite answer. Okay. Well, At okay. least not that's been brought to me. Okay. I was just curious to see. I'd be allowed to speak out of turn. The uh, you, you son. My son is in seventh grade now, and he's a very responsible young man. As anyone who knows my son, he's very, very, uh, he's, he's an old soul at, at 13 years old. And his his opinion on the matter is that he thinks this would be a horrible idea. Not biased, nothing that I spoke to him. His first opinion when I asked him, what he says he sees in the high school, he says he does not want his little sister to see. That's a real, that's a real opinion for my son. And I, and I have to say thank you for that, but I, I have to ask that we, we not speak because this is our you know this is our meeting for for the business. <clears throat> um, now we're moving on to the award recipients. Yep. Um, so I'm going to ask Jim Chauvin if he's going to step up and thank you everyone for coming to our awards ceremony. <laughs> 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 so, 
all here to celebrate with us. <laughs> great. So I couldn't be more proud uh, to have with us Chris Luthen Frank and Jen Shogan, who were awarded the BFW Teacher of the Year Award at the local level for K-5 for Jen Shogan and for 6-12 for for uh, K through five. And this is an award, uh, both awards are given to teachers for their outstanding uh, commitment to teaching Americanism and patriotism to their students. Each year a certified licensed elementary and junior high school teacher is um, chosen whose curriculum focuses on citizenship education um, topics can be nominated uh, for the Smart Mahar BFW National Citizens Education Teacher Award. And we have from uh, Senator Lesser, a citation uh, to uh, Jennifer Vale Chauvin uh, for being named the Department of Massachusetts Veterans of Foreign Wars Teacher of the Year. Crystal, get in there. Pretend like you like it. <laughs> The next item is East Meadow Capacity. Uh, so Jen. I move to change the grade configuration of East Meadow Elementary from pre-K through grade six to pre to pre-K through grade five and to change the grade configuration of the Granby Junior Senior High School from grade seven to 12 to grades six through 12. And do I have a second? I'll second, uh, so we can discuss. Okay. Did you want to start the discussion? Yes, okay. I do want to. Um, so first of all, thank you all. As you all said, we received uh, tons of emails. Uh, Many of you approached us in person. Really appreciate it. Um, it shows how much everyone cares about this issue. Um, it also feels like there is really no winner in this, in this case. Uh, I think it was one of the uh, first things that I mentioned, that regardless of which way we go, we, we're not going to please everybody. My concern at the time was also that we were, uh, we were going to have a debate that could uh, give the impression that we cannot agree on something this important, and I don't think uh, that's the case. I really think that all your support or objection, they're coming from a special place. You are reflecting your perspectives, and I personally appreciate it. Uh, I think it was the very first meeting again when I told somebody that uh, my children are no longer in the school district, and if they were, uh, I, would, I would go through the same uh, same motions and have the same emotions. So, uh, so uh, again, just even though we may not always agree, uh, it is much appreciated. So, based on something that has been said a few times, I want to make sure that everybody understands that the school committee here is not here because uh, of our own children. For instance, in my case, I no longer have any children. This is my third term on the school committee. My commitment to is to public education in Granby. And with that, my primary concern is always and always with these students in the school district. I don't know your children, uh, but I don't have to know them. Uh, the moment I came and joined this committee, that became my primary concern. And at times, uh, when I had to make decisions, I put my own children to the side, and I had to consider whether or not that was for the good of uh, the broader student population here. So uh, please know that every, every student in this school district, even, even if we don't agree in you know, how we uh, go about certain things, 
is important to every single member of the school committee, and I know that they are important to every single member of the school administration. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with this, and I shared this with you a little while ago, that I think uh, we, we started with a problem statement that did not help this conversation. The problem statement, or the problem that was stated was that we had a capacity issue in East Meadow, in East, East Meadow School. When we went that way, I think the conversation very naturally started going in the direction of finding a way to uh, make sure that we keep no, uh, so many students in one building. I think the problem was a little different than that, at least from my perspective. The school committees, as far as uh, I can remember, had a commitment to keeping uh, classroom sizes small uh, in, in our school district, especially in elementary school. Uh, we, uh, every year, we uh, affirmed our commitment to smaller classroom sizes. There were a few reasons for that. Obviously, we were hearing from the community, and they were really appreciating the fact that in our uh, smaller classrooms, our students were getting uh, better education because they could get more attention from their teachers. Uh, but also, uh, the way we looked at educational philosophy, we were looking to get to this point where every child with their technology, with their ability to interact with their children, they could uh, design their own path and they could become uh, learners on their own. So they would ask for that path and the, uh, their education would be dependent on what they need and they would be able to um, uh, determine uh, what they, they would like to have. So the school building project and this school, we're, we're lucky to have it. Um, it really took a long time for our town to get this point where we have this new building. Sometimes we tend to forget the challenges and struggles that we had to go through. Uh, but I would like to uh, remind everyone that the school building committee uh, took several years to, until this building was put together. There were multiple iterations. I know some of you have done an excellent job going through all the reports that came about uh, over the course of those uh, two, three years or so. Uh, but also remember that there were multiple iterations to what we uh, um, talked about with regards to the size of the school, what we would like to do with the school, many iterations that eventually got us to a point where there was hopefully a balance between the things that we were receiving and how much our uh, town residents would have to pay for a a brand new building such as this. There were a few other conversations over the course of the last so many meetings. Now, one of them uh, focused on uh, school choice. So there are differing opinions on school choice. Uh, we heard some of you uh, mention school choice again this evening. The one thing that I will say is uh, we had a similar conversation, I think it was last year. And again, there was a lot of concern uh, about school choice students. Here's the thing. We have town residents who actually have school choice uh, students in our, in our district. Uh, they were grandmothers who, took, who were taking care of uh, the children of their, uh, of their children uh, because uh, of their circumstances. We had students coming to this town because of their direct connection to this town. The reason why I'm only going to mention this and I'm going to stop there is this. When we start uh, making it sound like school choice by definition is a bad thing because the students that we're receiving are not good, I think we are not helping ourselves. We're not helping our own humanity. Uh, many of those students come here because they want to be in a great district like this. And many of them actually found their way here because of the connections that they have. So I just wanted to uh, share that with all of you. The other thing that came up several times in the conversations what related to uh, special education. Special education is tricky. Uh, for many of us, it took a long time to really understand the law, what was required, and all that. Uh, those of us who were on the school building committee, we also uh, learned a, a different layer of those uh, requirements. 
Uh, there are space requirements for special education uh, students. You have to, their classrooms, classroom sizes are different. You have to really uh, uh, address their needs differently. So if you look at the school building project, and if you, and I think it is part of the package that some of you have been sharing with us. If you look at the correspondence, back and forth with the state, um, some of the conversations that the school building committee itself had. They were all to make sure that we were not in violation of any law and that we were providing what the special education students were going to need. There was nothing overboard. As you can see, this was the optimal structure that was built at that time. If there was one drawback, was, that was that we started with one classroom short. So some of you, uh, Sometimes kindly, kindly, sometimes uh, not so. You are, you know, mentioning that maybe there was an error uh, that was made in the process. And if, you know, uh, uh, nothing is perfect. If you think that the decision that the school building committee had made at the time was arbitrary and with the knowledge that we were going to find in this situation, I think we're also being unfair to all those folks who committed their time and their expertise to make sure that we had the best school building that we could have for uh, a town like uh, Granby. So there are ways to obviously stay in this building. This is, these are, the rest of it is, uh, are my opinions. We have two pre-K uh, classes. One of them was not really in the plan. So the moment we added that extra pre-K classes, uh, we were now short by two. Some of you had objections to the fact that uh, uh, um, our, our administrative team came back with a third uh, classroom need. That third classroom, as I understand, was related to some change in dynamics around special education, but let's just put that aside. The, the, the way to really accommodate within this building Again, this is my own walkthroughs and my own review of the uh, school building project plans and the correspondence and all that. Would be doing a few things. One is probably we would need to drop one of the pre-K classes. And then we would, to really, we would need to focus on that lounge area that many of you brought up and do something with that. There is a cost related to that. I will not even get into the cost. In fact, when we first started, I asked all of you not to worry about the cost first, even though we're going to talk about it, because we first want to make sure that we have a list of the best options in front of us for us to be able to talk about them. Here's a challenge with that. This, this school's design actually represents a design that the school building committee at the time agreed to with a lot of consultation with the architects and the project managers that many of you seem to have uh, reached out and spoken with. So this optimal structure, including the lounge itself, was part of a modern school design so that those students would have a place to be able to do some activities, especially when the weather's not so good out there. And I, you know, all of you know that we have weather uh, that is not always so good. So it wasn't really a haphazard design. Some of you may know this, and some of you may not. Uh, this school design also was an award-winning design. Uh, uh, it was uh, part on some uh, magazines that were uh, celebrating best school designs uh, to accommodate uh, student needs. So the reason why I wanted to mention this is to, again, once more before we get to our vote, uh, to reiterate that the decision that got us to this building and all the work that went into it, they were not haphazard. They were really uh, a result of a thoughtful uh, process. So now going back to uh, what I started with. If we go to the school committee's commitment to have uh, small classroom sizes, there is really no other way to stay in this building and accommodate uh, our students unless we go in the direction and knowingly so of increasing classroom sizes. So let me just first uh, mention uh, something about that. I personally would not now uh, reverse 
uh, uh, my commitment of the last eight years and uh, approve a design that will increase the classroom size to a point that there will be uh, many students in one classroom. They will not benefit from it. The teachers will not benefit from it. And I'm not sure that you know you will benefit from it as the parents of those of those uh, students because you will have to really uh, probably uh, address their needs outside school if they're not taking if, if they're not getting what they need to get in within this building. The other two options, as I mentioned at one of the buildings, I was an arm's length to both. At least I tried to keep myself that way. I tried to remain uh, objective uh, for both. The pre-K option, again, one of you today even mentioned, the pre-K option was really attractive to me early on. Uh, for the reasons that, again, one of you mentioned, I, you know, based on my readings, I, uh, I found out that some students benefit from participating in that early childhood development education, and you know, they, uh, they spend a lot of time with preschool students, and that benefits the preschool students as well, at least. Uh, the sources that I was able to find, they were pointing to that. And there are several school districts around us that are doing that. The big challenge to that, unlike, and I appreciate some of you offering your own time, we really have to go through a process beyond asking for volunteer contributions. That, as you well know, those of you who were part of the conversations related to this building, that takes a while and it's, it's not really as cheap as you may think. So the reason why I'm saying, and you may say just, you know what, you didn't want to talk about costs, why are you bringing this up? It's because I then started thinking whether or not the amount of money that we would spend next door at GHS uh, could be used differently for other purposes, for educational purposes in this district. Uh, I personally cannot really justify if those numbers are accurate, and you know sometimes they were challenged. I also, yeah, I'm not sure uh, whether you know they would be the final um, final cost of uh, such renovations, but if they are even close to it, I cannot justify spending that money as opposed to spending that money for educational purposes in this uh, district. Uh, finally, the sixth grade. So. Some of you have done great research, and I really appreciate it, which also uh, forced us to do uh, some research, to go and uh, look into the literature and what exists. Uh, the Duke University um, study seems to be the most uh, prominent one, but there are many others. That's not the only one. Uh, there are many others. Some of them are conclusive, some of them are not. Some of them are saying, hey, you know what? Uh, an elementary school could be uh, K through eight at the end, it seems like they are focusing on one factor, that is the adjustment factor. So regardless of when the students really shift from one grade to the next, understandably, it has to be at a reasonable point in their, uh, in their elementary experience. They go through some adjustment cycles, but uh, that is basically the dramatic here. So if they do it in the fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, they always seem to go for, uh, through some uh, adjustment cycle. Um, what we are talking about and what is equally unclear to me as it is obviously to you since some of you mentioned it is what is the what is the design that we are looking to send sixth grade students to again I have no fundamental objection to sixth grade being part of a six eight middle school Again, just a quick tidbit, as you know, uh, many of us were doing uh, research. Apparently, in early 1960s, about 5% of school districts had 6-8 uh, structure. By 2000, about 70% of them uh, were 6-8. So it's not really an unusual design. Many school districts have uh, middle schools 6-8. What I hear your concerns to be is that you are concerned about the well-being of your children. You are concerned about some of the interactions. You are concerned about anything from uh, social media usage to bathrooms to interaction with uh, upper gradesmen. I think that's, that's all fair. Uh, the one thing that I, again, want to emphasize is this. I think inadvertently in these conversations as we were talking about all the danger that was awaiting sixth graders, 
we were not really fair to the students on the other side. Um, I don't suppose that every single student on that side is going to be a bully, is going to be teasing, is going to be a bad example or a bad role model for any of the students that will go there. Will there be exceptions? I, you know, as far as I know, you don't have to go there. Even in this building, you can find some examples of uh, similar behavior uh, without going into uh, 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 any more detail than that. So my concern, and this is for all of you who've done uh, the great work, and I really appreciate it, and I cannot imagine that this was any less stressful for you. My concern is that, as I mentioned at the very first meeting, that I do not yet know what the exact design is going to be. You've shared a, a great amount of information with us about um, how you will try to uh, keep the students separate from each other, where they're going to be located, what type of uh, curriculum changes uh, could happen with uh, interaction with the, uh, with the uh, community, especially the parents. I still don't know that I have a good picture of what that looks like. And for that reason, I don't know that I, even though I would be okay with it, and I want to make sure that it's well understood, I'm not objecting to the idea of sixth grade. At this point, I don't know that for the upcoming school year, I am prepared to vote for sixth grade to move to the, uh, uh, the high school. If we can redo the motion, give ourselves a little more time, and still support a sixth grade option as the primary option, I would be okay with that. But I really would like to be in this position of a decision making. I would like to be as informed as possible so that one day, uh, not only folks in this group, but anybody uh, doesn't come and say, you know what, you guys agreed to something that you did not even understand and I don't wanna be uh, able to say, yes, you're right. Um, so I don't know if that uh, puts us in any clarity, but my, my suggestion would be to amend the, uh, the motion to move, to sh uh, shift the date of such a move to the uh, school year 2021-22, contingent upon that final plan that you guys will share with us for that. And with that, I also want to clarify that unless something dramatic happens or the vote doesn't go that way, I don't know that I personally want any, uh, any more detailed analysis. It would be great. It would have been great. Uh, that will deviate us from a more concrete path. Uh, so what I mean by that, for instance, uh, for me, whether or not we further dig into analyzing this building, if my peers want to do it, that's fine from my perspective. It's not a requirement. Same thing with uh, pre-K moving to uh, the other side. Um, but again, just I would like to keep contingency on this decision, and I would like to have a lot more uh, as far as a plan is concerned, and voted for the following school year, um, and that may give all get, that may give all of us to really clarify some of these things. And I have to say, some of these uh, information that you seem to have uh, gathered, they are not necessarily uh, accurate. Uh, we can all talk about that and uh, uh, clear some of the misunderstanding, but it may give us uh, some time to really uh, manage this move in a, in a better way. One person's uh, decision, and I apologize it was a long thing, but I've been thinking about this as I was driving, believe it or not. Um, uh, hmm? I said I've been thinking about it longer than just yeah. right here. So, um, <laughs> So I, I, again, I don't know if we want to continue with this one because I'm not obviously the only member of the school committee, so there might be some differing views. Can we, so we're, are we, do we have to make a move to amend the motion then, or can we still have discussion, or I'm not really clear how it works. Well, that was just continue. My question is, like, do we, do we have a motion to amend the, the motion? <laughs> well, or a second. Yes. So, so, do we have, so what would your motion actually be, and do we, so, this meeting law thing, I just want to make sure that we're doing it right, and I usually screw it up. So, right. so, so if we, so you made, essentially made a motion to amend the existing motion, so we can't have any more discussion until we decide 
on your whether mind. or not that amendment is approved. If not, mm -hmm. we go back to the original and then we talk about that. So, what I'm asking now is, is the motion that was read good except for the date? Like, would would that be what you're what you're looking for? To reread the motion but change the date? No, there is that. There's something? a contingency component to that for for me and. Feel free to disagree. This is not really mm -hmm. for everyone. For for more information as far as what that plan will look like. So when we talk mm -hmm. about, I don't know, when the students are going to be, uh, you nicely mentioned that students would be on your hallway, right? And they would be separate. But what are some of the ways we're going to make sure that that's going to happen? I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I'm not clear about that. Those are the details that I'm talking about. If we can get to that, that would be that would be uh, the the purpose of my motion. So the contingency comes from that, but also moving it to the following school year. Uh, if you allow me, um, this is not really this is not really the best solution either. I, I just want to uh, make that clear also, because there is at least one one grade that will go uh, slightly above if everything stays the same. The numbers that we we had talked about all these years. So there will be one grade for one year as we are uh, waiting for this change that will have higher numbers in their classroom. I don't know whether that's fair to them, but you know uh, that's uh, part of our change. Um, I personally, hopefully, they you know they they do well and they you know they forgive us for you know putting them in a classroom of 26 or so. Uh, but that's what's going to happen. This is not the best, best option either, even for that one year. So I think, I think we need, in order to move forward from this point, we need you to state your motion and then a second to that, right? Or to make your motion and then we need a second to that. Well, I would, I would still think we should discuss the motion presently and then take it from there. Yeah, that's why I did not really move okay. to make the motion, okay. make the that's amendment fine. yet. I just thought that it would be unfair for anyone else who did not get to say anything yet. And I'm prepared to make an amendment, motion for amendment after that. So why don't we just continue discussion on the existing amendment, right? Yes. And then come, circle back, is that how the it would work? The okay. existing motion that's, that's been ma yeah. made in second. Okay. So who, who wants to speak next? We'll go right down, you can go next, Jan. So here we are, the day I've been dreading. Um, so again, I'd like to echo what Emery said and thank everyone for coming. I've been doing so much talking. I can't even speak proper English now, but I've been really reaching out to a lot of people. And one of the things that I realized is that I was a part of some of that fear mongering. And I, I was so concerned for my younger daughter that I lost sight of my older daughter. I know that my daughter, who is a freshman in the high school, and her friends and my family would protect and look out for the littles, as we call them, and my group of friends. It doesn't mean I'm not concerned about what it is that my little would see in the high school. I know we are very lucky in our district for how good our kids are. The things that we see in Granby pale in comparison to what my friends are seeing in neighboring districts. So I commend you as the administration and the faculty for doing such a great job. But I have, I have some fears that, realistic or not, they are there for me. I have fear of whether it's complete segregation for a sixth grade over there or not because we haven't really nailed it down like Emery said. I'm disappointed with what I'm hearing just sort of in the rumor mill around town that people have lost in the community faith and trust in the school department, the school administration, and what impacts me in our school committee. I don't like being at the end of accusations that I did this, that we made decisions, because that's not fair and it's not true. I'm with you guys on wanting to know 
what's not wanting to know. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, some of my additional concerns that I have about this is I feel like we've been so focused on getting to the end result that there are going to be hidden costs that haven't been outlined because it's the easiest of the options. And by easy, I don't mean um, that it's easy in any way for anyone making this decision, but it's a more readily available and um, quick to implement decision. And I fear that what's going to happen is we're going to make this decision and we're going to get to the dollars and cents of it and we're going to have to go to um, town meeting floor and ask for more, more money and then we're going to be stuck because we probably wouldn't get it passed. I'm worried about are there additional approvals that we need to make above school committee level to make changes to our model as far as granting purposes um, and again with the sports I'm not sure um, people have mentioned to me about MIAA and things like that so again it's kind of swirling around I don't really know where the logic <coughs> is for some of that and lastly it feels rushed if we do this now and make a vote now we're going to be hurrying up to make transition for our fifth graders that will be impacted and moved for the sixth graders um, to be the first gra first class of sixth graders in the high school it's almost march and and a lot of what we've been reading and has been presented it would be a bigger transition time well some of those transitions for the sixth grade going to seventh grade there have been talks about it and things and now the fifth grade it's going to be kind of thrown at them and what I'm mostly worried about is that there's like a shell shock factor that because they they don't know where they go or where they belong right now and I hear it from my daughter both of them and it's it's kind of a scary thing for me that I just feel like Ultimately, all of the I's haven't been dotted and T's crossed to be able to make a decision. Um, I think everyone's pretty clear on where I land on this, but I don't want to have the teachers be upset for having larger classes, and I feel like there's still work that we could do to think about how we're using space here. I, I just haven't given up hope that what we're, how we're doing things here, or perhaps how we're scheduling things here, there's not options um, that are there. I don't know, I feel like we're, I'm going around and around, so I'm just gonna stop, but this is a lot and it's hard, and it's just hard. Not that it's supposed to be easy, but. Jen, I want you to know that the teachers in this school system, as you have said, have nothing but the children in mind, no matter what the decision. <clears throat> so, Jen, did you want to say anything? This is hard. The two gems were choir. <laughs> I should sit between them. <laughs> Stop crying. Okay. The thing. I sat and I listened to some of the focus groups. My kid is at the high school and some of the things that were said, that's not my kid, that is not most of the kids over there. Preschool, my child benefited from preschool. And to say to cut one of them, if we have a lot of residents here, I, don't, I feel, and again, I only have the one but if we start taking away from one individual to make sure we give to another, how is that fair to the parents and the child that lives here? This is hard. I can't, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. I don't, there's nothing that is shown that makes me feel like there is something positive. This school is and not a capacity issue. It is a structure on how things are worked. A special ed is a requirement. This is not something that any school district can get away from. 
it's not fair to those students and those parents, those families that live here that are not, they, they don't have the same access. I can't do this. Because it's not fair to the children. It's not fair to the teachers because I read on both sides. Like moving them is hard. And then having a lar large classroom, it has the same effect. I can't speak. Take your time to go. And when you're done. You can go. I'll give her a break. Thank you, Emory. Thank you, Jen and Jen. Uh, I know this is not difficult, so uh, I'm not going to try to repeat a lot of things. So I'm just going to come from, um, I think mostly probably know how I feel because, you know, because of my career in this community. So with that, I've seen all the comments, the things that people say. I don't need to repeat any of those because I probably concur with many of those, many of those. And also just to follow up. In any of my discussions, I've never said anything about our kids at the high school because seventh grade, our kids have always left sixth grade and gone there into that building. And those kids in that building now predominantly are kids that have gone through our elementary schools. There are kids still. So, and there's always going to be some, just like I know, for the most part, you need to know. And again, Regardless of the numbers that have talked to me, or if you want to do an informal poll of who's in favor of it, uh, there are very few who are saying, yes, I can't wait for my sixth grade to get over there. One, no problem. But I don't care even if 100 said, send my kids over there, I wouldn't agree with it. So putting that perspective, you know that historically, as I've said before, seventh grade has been at that Grammy Junior High School. In fact, I was there a long time ago. Left West Street, the sixth grade, that's what it was. When I started here in 1973, I taught sixth grade. So I've been trying to put things in perspective. What's a sixth grader like? My first class, some of you may be sitting out here, in 1973, the last group I had in 2011 as principal that I sent over there, and what has happened in the last nine years? For the present sixth graders over here now who are going over there in September. I don't think they've changed that much. Maybe, you know, social media and stuff has changed a bit, but they belong in the elementary school. This is where they belong. I've said this before. Um, further academics, the MCAS scores, the academics, the responsibilities, study skills, doing homework, and so on. Prepare the kids so when they get over there, they're ready to fly to work with the great staff over there and the programs that hopefully will continue. The, the, the town, I think, will take care of that school. Yes, we're not gonna build a new one, but I think they'll take care of it. It's not gonna fall down tomorrow. Uh, we should piecemeal it and make it work. It does. So putting that in order, in my career, kids come first. I don't care if it was harder for me, we do what's best for kids. Right now, best for kids to stay here. If we talk about constituents, it's a no-brainer. There isn't anybody that I see in the Lions Club out in the community, or even uh, an example I had, I came to the Honor Society here in the gym in November. Touched base with some, I didn't know many of the kids, they were beyond when I retired. But there was a uh, parent there who had a daughter who was saying, what's going on with this sixth grade thing? And they said, boy, if my daughter was still going over there, I would not want it. And she's already been, she's a senior, she's graduated. Thinking back, this is what happens. All the things that people have talked about here, that's what we have to think about. We know that, you need to know that there was a year, a couple years, grade seven and eight were in this building. I think it might have been in the early 80s. There was no room over there. We even put lockers in the hallways here. I remember that. You know, they were here, they were sharing staff. But that was just a temporary thing. And that's when even fourth grade, I think, was split. There's some fourth grades here, some at Western. But basically, and I know we don't have to go by change, but historically in this community, grade seven is over there. Really has been since that school was built in 1963. Yes, things can change and so on, 
but the things Amber referred to and our time on the school building commission, that's what we built. I, I always thought that. Was there ever a discussion where we would say, let's make this school smaller by making only pre-K through five and let's go, never came up. I tried to look through the minutes, it never came up. That could have been a good opportunity, but it never did. I know there's been some enrollment issues here, but I'm, I, I think I'm not gonna be the one to tell administration what to do or how to do it. You know, cut this or cut that or put this one in. I have to believe that that's their responsibility. I've never asked what the, I've seen feedback, but I've never asked what the real consensus, you know, if I had a staff meeting with this school, K through six, to update then what's going on, what is their consensus overall? Are they, you know, what is the consensus? I don't have a good handle on that, but I feel that working with that administration, the kids staying here, and I'd like to say that I think they need to stay here permanently, not a year away or two years away. This is where they need to be, uh, period. That they could make this work, and it's, I don't think it's up for me to tell them how to do it. So that's how I feel. Uh, Jen, did you want to take a shot or are you all set? I just, I just want to say to everybody, as much as you're fighting for your kids, could we please do that for the schools? Because since I've been here with my kid, everybody fights the school. We've got to stop fighting the school. Amen to that. Because this is not fair. It's not fair to the teachers, the administration, and our children. This is our community, and the children are our community. They go to school here. When we attack the school, we attack the community which our children are in. So it's got to stop. Well said, Jen. So I, I just wanted to say, um, I mean, a lot of a lot of what I wanted to say was actually said by by some others. But um, again, I just wanted to reiterate some of the stuff that I've read on social media and some of the things I've heard was, was really just over the line. Um, I'm pretty sure that when it was said, it didn't mean to be over the line, but the opposite of what you were saying, so like when you're talking about how bad this is, imagine if you're in that situation, and, and that's why I think it was over the line. Um, I, I, I too was all over the map on this decision. I, I really listened to everybody. I really heard everybody. I started one way. I kind of worked through all the, you know, all the, you know, all the information that I saw. Um, and, and you know, again, like Emery, I, I, I don't think I have an issue with six eight as a, you know, as a model. I believe if it was in its own building, we wouldn't be sitting here having all of these discussions. Um, if it was in its own separate building, nobody would care. We would just move them, ne you know, next week. Um, so I understand, in some ways, the the issues of moving them over there. Um, I have a fourth grader, so no matter what's decided, my my child is going to be impacted, and I do my best to keep that off to the side, um, and really look at what's best for the district overall, um, for the foreseeable future, as long as we can see into the future, as best as we can see into the future. Uh, and I struggle with really spending money on something that I don't think long term is going to be a requirement. I'd rather see that money spent if if any if, if any more was was sent our way on instruction or or things within the building itself. Um, but that's that's really all I had to say. Thank you. So I don't know if you want to make a motion. Motion. Um, it occurred to me that actually I have another uh, layer to that uh, motion, which is I believe in your motion, Jen. You're referring to a six twelve school, right? Uh, yeah. All right. That's one of the things that is uh, still confusing to me. So. Um, my amendment would make this to um, change grade configuration at East Meadow Elementary from pre-K through grade six to pre-K through grade five. 
to change the grade configuration of GHS from uh, grades 712 to grade 612, I would like to add the 68 element in there. So we are making that uh, official part of our request. And I think that's what we heard last time we talked about it. Um, and I would uh, make the final decision on this contingent upon the uh, plan that will be presented to the school committee and make them, uh, if approved, make the move in school year 2020, uh, 2021, 22, I guess. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. uh, 20, 20, yeah, 20, no, no. 2021 is this coming school year. So Correct? Fall, not this fall. No so fall. it's 21, 22. Could you say that again? I can. <laughs> can we roll tape? I know it. Uh, so, so it's uh, just change. Keep it, keep it till here. here. Okay. Yeah. Change. Great fit configuration in, G in GHS. Well, it's got to be both G, J, F, G, 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 yeah, yeah, yes. Um, to include uh, 6, 8, and 9, 12. 12. Uh, with the decision being contingent upon a plan presented to the school committee. Oh, you're talking to pass with decision being? Contingent, final decision being contingent upon a can we Can we just kind of keep it down, please? Oh, everybody? I, I, I do I do want to make sure that um, two things. Yeah. One is that there's an actual decision. Um, and what scares me is it reads like we're going to make another vote at some other point, and I want to make sure that's clear as to what you're expecting and also what we're expecting to get between now and then from the, the leadership team for specifics. Does that make sense? On the motion, the it does. So we can, uh, if happens. this is not what it is, we can no, vote, vote the amendment down and then you yeah. can't, go to the original. Because then you have to, we have to. I, I, ju I just want to make sure there's clarity and that there's that some <laughs> closure of movement forward. Does that make sense? Well, that was yes. So what you are concerned about is the contingent upon part. That one, yes. that's what we did at town meeting. Right. With the occupant thing. And so it seems very open ended. So someone has to make a motion to amend the original. And I want the community to know that we've made a decision, right? Yeah. Um, I, you can. I, I I just would like to have more information. That's fine. I, get, I understand. Yeah, but then in effect, you're telling them that you're voting for a six or eight middle school. Is that, is that what you're doing? Well, if there's a convenience. I mean, we don't, to you're not going to say just to make a decision. Can we change this? All right, yes. so this is what this is what we've changed it to, but I'm not sure I'm final with this. I move to change the grade configuration of East Meadow Elementary from pre-K through grade six to pre-K through grade five, and to change the grade configuration of the Granby Junior Senior High School from grade seven through twelve to grade six, eight, nine, twelve, with final decision being contingent upon a vote by the school committee to authorize the configuration change school year 21-22. So, <coughs> Mr. Beatrice, do you, do you want to read it? No, I, okay. I'm probably not going to vote for it anyway. So. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're, so what, what you're saying, saying is the contingent upon part? <coughs> So if we just I, I go just, with this, I just don't want to make it so that we have to have another vote to move them over there. I, I want to I want to give you some leeway with understanding the piece. So you're saying you want the decision whether the sixth grade goes this year or next year? You want that decision made now? Uh, no, I, what I'm hearing is no. That I'm asking my. I, I think it's important that we really put some firm you know, parameters about what we're asking them to do next. Right. Um, Otherwise, to me, we're kicking this down the road to next year when we decide we need to make another vote. That's, well, that's what we're reasoning to do. Be honest with you. Yeah. What I'm looking for, actually, is just a plan. So can we reword that a little bit 
differently so that it's like not another final vote? I Regardless, just there is no plan right now, so you know I want to. That that means another vote, right? I think the way it's like so the disparity as I see it is whether or not. I don't think it matters really how the motion reads at this point. It's because what we're changing it to is we're we're just putting off putting it off from this year to next year because we otherwise it, it's not time long. Like we can just keep pushing this off. So what you're saying I think is we have to deal with this year. This what? part. I think we have to deal with this year only. I think we're already jumping the gun. Yeah. We need to speak up out now. We deal with this year if the if the motion passes there's no issue with it if it fails then they go to the next step what they're going to do beyond next school year if we vote to keep it here then that's what's going to happen then if they want to do something the following year that's what the administration or school committee will work on the following year i think we're jumping a gun a bit all right i hear you and that agrees with what you're saying too is that it's like an even no, it's just it's still pushing it out. So I will still suggest the amendment to be this so that officially we are looking for a six eight nine twelve. I think that's what you guys are trying to do. Does six it, eight nine twelve, correct? Does it really matter though because the ultimate Thing is still six to twelve. Does it matter how how we're breaking it out? Six, eight, or nine, twelve? No, the designation to Desi would be six, twelve. So regardless, we this doesn't mean it's six, eight. Because the designation is dependent upon the school structure, school building, as opposed to. There's no need to structure it as a six, eight to Desi. It would be considered six, six, twelve. Six, twelve. Yeah, because the building becomes six, twelve regardless. Right, because you can't break it out because they everything is. Shared it would, it would never be a middle school building because the high school is still there, right? I, I, I can't see any reason why this would, would break it out. You would request to be considered junior senior high school. So, so how about if we split it this way? So I think maybe if, if we if we were to be okay, so the, the thing to say final, we approve the final plan of the six eight model. Upon approval of the final plan. All right. Of the so if we model. did. And this puts in motion uh, the fact that it's going to happen. It's going to delay it a year. So but six we're also going to twelve is for it's, final that's what I'm saying. Is what the okay, I just want to make sure it's worded. And everything has okay. to be okay. regardless of how we so it. Me, it so how, how, how would we model. say it? I don't know. I just I just was in fear that we were kind of leaving them open ended. Like we were going to vote tonight on basically nothing, right? Um, that. So change grade configuration to this. We agree with this. Yep. So what you what you're saying change this part of it a little bit to be to really put in language about a vote to approve the six eight model proposed by now if that takes them an extra year to get something that we like that's that's something we can deal with next year but at least it sets in motion the fact that the sixth grade is going to move and we're just trying to iron out the details does that make sense yes. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, I think I understand what you're saying. So this part doesn't hold either? So you're saying that this is moot? Is that what you're saying? I think it's fine. I just wanted to make sure that um, what we were going to approve was the final model that you say you, we left, that you wanted more details on, uh, but we were going to vote to move the sixth grade. And then upon final upon approval, contingent upon approval mm -hmm. of the final contingent mm -hmm. upon approval of the final six eight model of the school eight, 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 eight uh, model. But it's, we need a plan. The word plan. Here. Or the, yeah, the model. I mean, plan, however, yeah. however you want to say it, you're saying you don't have enough details around yeah. what they Damn. want to do. Emory, you sure you don't want to withdraw eight. that? Pardon me? You sure you don't want to withdraw that? 
I may, I may, I did not make the, oh yeah, actually I did. So I may withdraw that because I'm changing it to read a little different. But in essence, the same thing. But all you're saying, just withdraw it so we vote for this. If it doesn't go through, it's still. Because if it, if it, if it fails, it's like great is staying here next year. Right. If well, no, if this, if this fails, we go back to the original motion. No, no, he's, he's saying okay. if, if I withdraw and then we vote on the original motion and that original motion fails, then basically that means at least for the for, for next year, uh, we're going to, we're saying this building is it. Then it says just bring it back next time and then make that decision that way. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the default by declining by voting this down, the original one, the default outcome is to stay here. That's what he's saying. So he's saying, if this is going to do that, why do you want to just do all the uh, contingent right. upon this? Because I think we're trying to cover the message. Right. Okay. That's just my opinion. Are you okay with that? With what? With what Jim's saying? No, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not just my decision. Jan, I'm not telling you to just withdraw. So, so should we have an amendment? Just, just withdraw that so we can vote on it. So we can deal with that again if it, if it, if it, uh, if, it if you think it's best. If it, if it, if it I just. How do you withdraw? I don't know. The original motion? No, no, no the original withdraw the oh. amendment. Oh, 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 okay. So where does that leave us then? We're back to her with the original, original motion. Okay. But that kicks it down the road, mm -hmm. and you don't you don't want that. Mm, not at all. But. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So here's here's where we where we are. Um, I will withdraw my amendment. Uh, I think the idea behind that is the following. If we have the original motion and that motion is voted down, that by default uh, tells us that we're going to be we're going to be uh, more than likely, unless it comes back anytime soon, we would have this school for the next school year, because my amendment was to push it really to the following school year. The only drawback, Jim, is that's going to what that's going to do, and you're not going to be with us at that time. We're going to have to vote this down the road. Um, and I think that's what we did not want to do. We just wanted to put some closure to some aspect of it with some conditions around it. But I understand the concern. So I will withdraw my amendment. So, okay. um, I will make another amendment, however, <laughs> uh, to change the nine. Um, I don't know what. What that means, I don't know whether there's any bearing, as you're saying, but I will change the 612 to 68 and 912. So that we have that option of looking at that, that new configuration from uh, that perspective as opposed to considering it uh, 6, 612. Um, again, I, I don't know, and I'm looking to you or anyone who has a, um, authoritative response to that, whether or not by being in a single building, regardless of what we call it, it is 612. I had the impression that we could call it 68 and 912. Uh, do you know what the answer is? No, I don't know. Um, what we had proposed is for DESE, as I said, it's a 612 uh, designation for accountability, but I can ask. Okay. <laughs> So, so do we do we need to reread the motion? Yes, I move to I move to change the grade configuration of East Meadow Elementary from pre K through grade six to pre K through grade five, and to and to change grade configuration in Granby Junior Senior High School from grade seven twelve to grade six eight and grades uh, nine twelve. Is there a second? This is just an amendment to. Yeah. So that wasn't the original motion that I read. It was the amendment. You know that, right? Right. Okay. Is there a second to that amendment? I'll second it. 
Okay. Um, all those in favor? What are we voting on? On the, <laughs> the amendment. And then on the you amendment. want to reread it again? So that yes. I just want to make sure if I say if I agree to the amendment, then I'm not. I want to know which part I'm voting on. So if you if you say yes to this, that means we are approving as of today. Oh. This okay. change. A little different than what it was in the original, but with this, I moved to change the grade configuration of East Meadow Elementary from pre-K through grade six to pre-K through grade five, and change grade configuration in Jun Granby Junior Senior High School from grade seven twelve to grades six eight and nine twelve. So we're not approving just the amendment; where it's the the whole shebang. Now it becomes yeah the, the okay. whole thing. We read it again, Emory. <laughs> yes. I move to change the grade configuration of East Meadow Elementary from pre-K through grade six to pre-K through grade five, and change grade configuration in Granby Junior Senior High School from grade seven twelve to grades six eight and nine twelve. And this is forever going forward, not next year, like just. If approved, this would be immediate decision to change. I just want to make sure I'm, I know I'm voting for the, the real deal thing now. That's all. Okay. The original motion was pre-K through five anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, but for uh, Grand Region Junior Senior uh, High School, it was saying 612, and I'm still not sure whether that's what we were talking about. And it may be moved if it's voted down or away. Okay, so there, were, there was already a second, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, so all those in favor? Of the amended. Of the amended? Aye. All those opposed? No. All right. I'm opposed. He's opposed. Yep. So we got it. Okay. All right. So then the next item is the budget. What was I didn't see what the final thing was. It was one to Jen, four. what did you? I can't really. She abstained. Okay. She abstained. So okay. Three to one. What's the vote? It's not. The so vote is, is not not the, the vote is not to not approve to the motion, which was an immediate decision to authorize move for next school year. <coughs> so, want to start with the budget, or do we want to go into executive session? I think the school committee needs to get the nuts and bolts of the budget because we're due for the uh, joint finance select board meeting on March 3rd, so she can give you the numbers. Okay. Um, and we're happy to meet with anybody. I know this has been longer than anticipated, but if people have questions and want to come uh, individually or even in pairs, you can come in pairs because it's not a quorum. Um, we'll be happy to discuss uh, others, but I think you need to see. Okay. Uh, the overall budget. I will, in presenting the budget, say again for the second year we're meeting the parameters of the town, um, which is great news. Um, and we're moving forward uh, Thank you with the town. Good night. Um, and so I'm, I am going to quickly turn it over to um, Adam so we can go over the budget in total, our requests that are aligned to the Did you want to tell everyone plan, that the motion failed? No, it's not. Okay. I don't think, well, I think people are coming. Um, Some of them even cheered. Should we just take two minutes <laughs> and look? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just would like to take a moment to remind everyone that this is still our regularly um, scheduled business meeting. So if you're going to leave, just please try to do so as quietly as possible. And if you're going to have side conversations, please remove them from, me, from, the, from the floor. Yes, that would be great to see the budget. Yep. So in your folders are, is the complete presentation. We've just been working on kind of pulling out some of the less uh, detailed information, but you've had it. As I said, if you've got questions, please be sure to you know, let me know. Um, as I said, the joint meeting is March 3rd. Second. Second. What time no, is that? Tuesday, <coughs> Monday. It's June, Monday. It's the second, I believe. Wait. It's, what Wait, time is that? You just, you just sent it out. The yes. It's I think it said March, March 2nd. It should be yes, Monday. the Monday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm, I'm, I can't. Yep. can't. It's, there, it's during their normal meeting. Monday, we, March 2nd. Yep, it's during their normal meeting, correct? Yes. Which is it 6.30? Starts at 6.30. I believe we're on the agenda for 6.45-ish. 6 45? Yes. Okay. Now, are we having any other meetings? This will be the first one, and we'll go from right there. So we're hoping for your feedback. Um, as I said, we met with the members of the town. We have um, additions to the budget that we'd like to go over. Um, there were some savings that we're um, capitalizing upon uh, to meet some of the goals of the strategic plan. Um, we're on timeline for the joint meeting, um, and then we would be able to do a public hearing uh, within the timeline of March, early April. Uh, and unless uh, Finance Committee and Select Board have any uh, outstanding concerns or requests, uh, we would move you know, pretty quickly through the rest of okay. the process. So, off to Adam. Okay, so uh, again, as Cheryl mentioned, real high level for the sake of time for tonight. Again, all the details are in the folder. Um, please review, email, call, whatever, <clears throat> however you'd like to ask any questions or talk about it. So, um, <clears throat> Just like previous years, a majority, almost three quarters of our budget is made up of salaries. Um, that's uh, instructional salaries, administrator salaries. Um, you can see right there, 72% compared to 28% for all other expenses that are not salaries. And if you guys have questions as we go, obviously ask away. In, pers in personnel, are there, are there any new positions or programs? We'll get, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Yep, we'll get there. Okay. Um, so again, quickly, this is just by each department how we got to the budget this year. Um, broken down by department, I added transportation in there, um, although that is a separate article that the town um, essentially gives us. It does make up our budget, so I wanted to put that in there for... Um, so we can see in totality what our budget is. <clears throat> Questions as I go to the next slide. Um, at, at some point, you're going to break down offsets, right? To yep, yep. Specific numbers? Yep. Okay. Certainly. Yep. And okay. I mean, just to get into it real quick, the offsets will include circuit breaker, um, school choice, Title One, Title Two, um, Title Four, and. Uh, spend 240 so our same our same um, offsets as usual so yeah and and i get that i just want to make sure that um those offsets the way it's broken out yep. um, i know when we send it off to the town it kind of gets rolled up high level and it yep. says offsets mm -hmm. um, due to some of the the things that pop up i think it's best that we at least save down <coughs> our copy someplace for the public to see which explains exactly what those offsets are sure sure yeah we would I do have that. Not sure. Like, I do have that, and yes, we can certainly... Yeah, I know you do, but if I'm seeing stuff, yep. I can say, just go to this webpage, yep. pull this, mm -hmm. and, you know, the information. <coughs> okay. I remember my question, because I've been following the news about the MIAA stuff, and they were talking about additional travel for sports and stuff. So I was wondering, our number was flat for transportation, and I know our buses and stuff are usually in that. Mm -hmm. So if we were to have, like... Where does that go? Okay, for, so we're in a tough a spot question? right now because we are in the middle of negotiations for our bus contract that will start next school year. Okay. Okay. So for the sake of the budget, we built in an increase to those numbers. Okay. It could be more. It could be less. I've kind of gone on some historical increases and applied it to <clears throat> this. Again, although transportation is part of our budget and it it's a part of our total budget. It's a separate town article. So the money just essentially comes from the town. Okay. It's not, doesn't come from even though us. It's list, even though it's listed here, it's just, it's part it, of our exactly. total numbers yep. that it, get rolled up. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. And we can go into more detail. Was one of my Good. Good question. We can go into more detail, um, again, for the sake of time for tonight. Any other questions? Can you remind us what OTPS stands So it's other than personal services. So yeah. anything that's not, um, Anything that's not a salary, essentially. Right. Thank you. So here, the next two slides are the most important slides, and they're um, the additional requests that either were not in the budget at all last year or maybe something that was in the budget that we are now increasing. Um, and I don't want to go through all of them. Obviously, the, the most glaring are going to be the... Um, 
three new FTEs and the five paraprofessionals that are added. Um, and I put the dean in parentheses there. It's, it's not the dean. The dean's already there. Um, that is the teacher that would fall into where the Which dean was. was coming from. So at the point of him being appointed the dean last year, we filled that position with um, long-term long sub money. So yes, it is in the budget. We just put it now as a full-time position. Okay. Just it, want to be clear on that. So <coughs> the salary for the dean is already um, rolled up into what your regular... It's in personnel. It's yes. in personnel, yes. Yep. Okay. All and of then, these are included in those numbers already. And then the paraprofessionals, I just want to make sure it's not 90 each. It's no. a grand total of Yes. Oh, yes. Well, I was like, wow. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. So, so again, and here's full transparency. Those are what we would, that is middle of the road for a sap, for a teacher salary where we would like to hire somebody per the budget. Could be less, could be more. Along with paraprofessionals, that's an average cost of a paraprofessional multiplied by five. Could be less, could be more. For sake of budget, we go with averages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What, what is the uh, administrator's cell phone stipend? So under the communication stipend, uh, communication tab, we've done um, AFTG. Uh, what that requires is for us to be using cell phones pretty much at every event. Um, so right now, um, administrators are, some of them per their contract are putting in for reimbursement. Um, some of them don't have reimbursement uh, in their contracts. So what uh, we're proposing is um, under increased communication, engaging community, um, is to have every administrator have a cell phone stipend. Um, so then they're, if they're at a game, they're, they have the data and the, the capability to upload um, to the live feed, which feeds into the um, which feeds into the web page. That's for instantaneous updates to. Yep. To, to so the it's not just one administrator. It's, it's all. Oh, yes. Just okay. just Cheryl has it. Yeah. yeah, and that's no. It that I believe is a sixty dollar a month stipend for all administrators. Can we just put like a number by how many administrators? Like if it's ten or twelve or sure. fifteen or whatever. Yep. So because I was like kind of like, oh, that's. Yep. What's the high school intramurals? Okay, so, okay. <laughs> okay. I guess right. we're going to go through all of I guess we're, we're well, going right. to. Yep, so the high school intramurals, and I'm going to possibly let Allie dive into a little more detail, not too much, <laughs> but the high school intramurals was the um, our plan to get kids that were not participating in sports um, into another, a more co-curricular environment. So this is adding intramurals that we've gone over, um, and it's a stipend, um, a, a partial stipend for someone to oversee those intramurals, along with some cost for those intramurals to get them up and going, whether it be supplies, uniforms, things of that nature. Anything else? Okay, I don't know the specific intramurals, and I'm not sure we want to get into that, but if you want to... Regardless, um, we've been running intramurals for the last 10 weeks, and so we actually just posted for a second round and already have over 20 kids signed up. So Steve and I have been doing it, um, but as you know, it can be challenging. Another hat you wear as an administrator. So our hope was to build um, some of that stipend into the assistant athletic director, for the foreseeable future. Um, so we can continue those programs. Well, we don't mind doing it. Um, it gets out of our office, you know, for an hour, but our plan is to continue it. Because the kids have been really receptive, enjoying it, and we will continue putting out different offerings. So like we just pitched basketball for a second round because we're, basketball is pretty popular in the building, um, and indoor soccer. So we'll see what they choose. We gave them until Friday, and then we're planning to start a second round for the remainder of the school year next week. Okay. And intramural has no fees? It's basically no, what they no, do no. during school? Yeah. No okay. fees. It's so just staff participation among more of the students in the building. I would say they're intramurals called curricular activities. Mm -hmm. So it's, they're, it's like after school or in a few yeah. period? After mm -hmm. school, Monday and Wednesdays from 2 to 3. Because that's the day of the late bus? And that's a, so this is a new item for the budget for this year. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Yeah. Sorry. No. Uh, I'm not going to ask about any of the other stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, my 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 concern is, and it's all about labeling. Mm-hmm. When you say total requests. Yep. Um, I think we need to figure out how to state that better. And I'm sorry for saying that, but there are people that are going to see what they want to see and read what they want to read mm -hmm. and make assumptions based on what they want to assume. Yep. And that looks like we're asking for more than what you said earlier. So you're, what you're saying is we showed them what our budget is, but now we want this on top of that. That's what it looks like. Yes. I, just, I just want to make sure that we're I all... I think we had the same conversation last year. So I, I do. Yep. Certainly. Yep. But, okay. but again, people are going to put their own spin on it yep. based on what their agenda is, mm -hmm. uh, for good or bad, whatever. But yep. That Could to me. this be an addition to, this is an addition to the FY21 budget? Would this be included? So, so the way I understand it, and let, and, let, and let me try, because the way I understand this is this isn't, this isn't above, this yeah. is new to the so local budget we didn't have last the, year. So this is that request number, this 325, 750, and the slide after this are already embedded into these numbers. Right. Yep. So these are additional these are, to, to FY21. These are above and beyond for FY, what we had in FY20. Yeah, yep. so if we can say it in, in the way, in this proposed budget, mm -hmm. these are the additional positions yep. or added costs mm -hmm. so that they're not thinking that it's an additional on top of. And I think, to be honest, I think how we did it last year, we had a slightly different presentation for the public that wasn't so... Um, Number driven and more explanation. I, I just I just want to make sure that when yep. we when we send this out, the message is clear, yep. concise, and that there's no, I mean, there's never going to be no room for people to misconstrue, but yep. there's as little room as we yes. can make it. Right? Under, Could okay. it be new requests instead of total requests because total feels like if I don't know. Let, so well, I, I hear, I understand. Let's not get hung up on yeah, that. I, just, I, I, I just, totally agree. I made my point, I, yep, and I'm ready totally to move agree. forward. Totally agree. <laughs> oh, okay. Totally agree. Um, I can give you a Bruins update if you want. No, no <laughs> other questions on um, any other additions. Some of them are minimal, but in full transparency, we wanted to put them there. Uh, again, the feminine hygiene products, it's only $5,000. However, it's a state mandate that the state says you now have to offer these products to certain grade levels and good luck trying to fund that on your own. So it's minimal to a district like us, but I want to put it in there to, to show that there are some mandates that we have no choice but to fund. Uh, and and, and, I, and to, be, to, to be honest with you, the more itemized it is, to be honest, the, yep. you know, the better I feel. Yeah, yeah. Because this goes back to what I had asked you to do earlier. Mm -hmm. In June of this year, when you, or maybe it's after when you get all the books settled out with Chris, we talked about going back and putting, um, so you have the budget proposed, yep. and then after the year is ended, we have the budget as it slipped through the year, yep. right? So that we can, we can show that if we fluctuated, we can then explain why we fluctuated here and where we took it from to make, make up that fluctuation. Yes. Just so that people don't, don't sit there and say, well, you're hiding this and you're trying to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got nothing to hide. Right. No. <laughs> Uh, just before I move to the next slide, any other questions aside from format or labeling? Okay. So again, these are educational requests, and when we say educational requests, meaning I should put, it should be instructional requests um, in the classroom to enhance instruction. Looks like you have a question. Yeah, I will. Okay. I'm only specifying that because this next slide are some of more additions that are operational requests. So I just want to make sure we make that distinction. Um, contractual obligations are all increases to our um, unit positions based on their contracts. And as we all are aware, we're going into negotiations, so um, that's built into contractual obligations. Yeah, and this is not total request either. Then. Again, yes, this is yeah. already embedded into our total numbers. Yep, so yep. I'll... Whatever we agree to switch it to, both of those slides will be um, changed. Can I ask? This is one of my stickies. Yeah. Let's see as we're going through it. Abatement of room two eleven. Yep. Abatement of what? So based <laughs> on the roof leak uh, two years ago, um, we closed that room off uh, because the tiles were loosened. 
Um, those are old school asbestos tiles. Okay. Um, there was no asbestos release, um, but uh, yeah, we didn't need the room space. So we just shut the door and said, we're not going to put any students in there. Um, because of the uh, burst pipe in the cafeteria, um, there was a complaint filed with OSHA. Um, they came out and looked at that and determined that uh, the facilities crew uh, complied with all requirements. Um, but they also did a walkthrough of the building uh, because there is asbestos in the building. It's of that age. Um, they asked us uh, for room 211 to close it off, um, seal it, and uh, note that uh, no one should be in there, but also to have a plan for abatement. We've always had the plan for abatement. Um, this is just now in the budget. Oh, okay. So you're really going to just clear that room out and get rid of all the asbestos? Yep. Yeah. It's really the floor <coughs> tiles. And again, the floor tiles aren't cracked. Um, they're not broken. They're, they're loose. Just, they're just um, completely. So they need to be removed and then taken off site uh, by an abatement company. So, you know, when you look at 8,000, that's really not a lot. It's the removal and disposal of the asbestos tiles. It seems like ridiculously low, well, actually. To me. It is, yeah. Um, and then in the end, we get that classroom back. We get the classroom back. Yep. Okay. yep. Which is awesome. And then um, I had to go through an abatement thing and a former life at a job, and everything that was in there had to be either professionally cleaned or disposed of. So mm -hmm. essentially everything in that room is, is a loss, right? I'm, I'm not sure what's in there at this point in terms of materials and supplies. I think it's pretty empty. Okay. Um, but they've come and given the quote. So the cool. company's been in. And That's awesome. Our yeah, facilities well, awesome. department is going to do as much work as they're um, required to do. Mm -hmm. And then this will obviously be on top of that. So. Okay, cool. Um, abatement. So uh, the next two um, things are uh, for athletics slash maintenance. So, um, and Allie just, and Allie just can't can. step in, so. Um, new ATV for maintenance slash, slash athletics. So we had a golf cart that um, Alley and or someone designated for sporting events out back was able to use mainly to transfer um, some older residents who were coming to games from the parking lot to the uh, games. That cart was also used for our maintenance staff to do some regular maintenance on the fields um, out there. Instead of bringing their trucks all the way back there, we'd load up in that golf cart. Whatever that was, the golf cart is broken down. So... Um, we did some cost analysis and cost comparison, and um, this would be the most cost-effective way to replace that golf cart. That credit to Allie, she bought used a few years ago. We made it work as long as we can, and we just can't do it anymore. Um, this would be shared by maintenance and athletics. Um, the cost would be shared by maintenance and athletics. We're trying to enhance the appearance of um, the fields back there. Um, so that kind of goes into the new baseball and softball fence. Right now, up until this year, they've had snow removable fences that we move each season. Um, what we're looking to do, and we got a quote last spring, is put permanent fencing on softball and baseball and then attract advertisements in on those fences so we can get some additional revenue for the athletic department essentially negating this would be cost neutral and we probably end up making um, money so that's where the thoughts are for baseball fences and the ATV we need to replace it and also we're trying to just enhance the appearance back there our sports our facilities all that so they kind of tie together so, so then why would we need new registers at the brand new school? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, that was, that was another so, one that was sticky. New registers. So um, although Chartwells is an outside company, they, we purchased the equipment. These, and I'm not sure if David is here. He is, so he can touch on it. We've already replaced so, uh, the registers at the high school this year that are just older um, and need to be updated. So they're new, and now we're looking to update those registers here at East Meadow, provide some detail if you can. Our contract with Charcoal requires us to provide <coughs> registers and the computer equipment uh, necessary for the operations of that program. The registers at the high school, uh, suddenly both of them failed earlier this year. 
and needed to be replaced immediately. We had to actually get a rush to us because it's hard to run the program without them. And the ones at East Meadow um, are only one year newer. So chances are they're going to start failing soon. Um, so they need to be replaced. So we didn't update them or upgrade them as part we of the... We already upgraded them. All once. We upgraded them using the recommendations. They mm -hmm. provided the uh, operating system updates as well as the memory updates. Um, yeah, I was I was referring to the school building. Just at the time, we did not get new registers. No, uh, we had we had uh, I had reached out to the vendor um, inquiry, um, and they told us that they were fine to continue using. Um, I emphasize the fact that, you know, um, we don't want any problems, so they're, 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 they're fine to continue using them. Um, so we went along with their advice, and although that carried us a little ways into this new building, it didn't work so well for the high school machines. Um, they did give us a discount on the ones we had to purchase, to purchase at the high school earlier, or earlier this year because of the hardships we had experienced. So, so these really aren't new registers in a new school, these are a replacement of old registers that came with the new the school. Registers, the, the what, there's two registers in this building right now. One came from West Street School. One came from, uh, one was here right along. Because we have two serving lines now, we merged it together. Um, we, we did update them. They weren't terribly old at the time. They were only a few years old. Uh, once again, we reached out to the vendor to make sure there was still some life expectancy in those machines and they assured us there was, so we went along with that. And quite honestly, we, we, we did end up, when you look at it, we ended up getting a couple more years out of them. Um, I, just, I just, I mean, to, right now that's a lot easier to understand and explain than when I first read it, and I, I didn't understand that they mm -hmm. were actually the old registers that were here before the, the school was, was rebuilt. Okay. So the one, once again, one of, them, they, they, one of them was here from East Meadow School, the other one came off of West Street School. Okay. All right. And just for the record, in case anyone wants you know, these are secure machines. They're operating, even the old ones are operating Windows 10. I know some people might be, because you know there's been a lot of press lately about whole operating systems and security vulnerabilities. They are running Windows 10. They are patched regularly, and they are uh, and they are managed for security updates. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, the next slide. In it might be a little hard to read, so I apologize. But this is just kind of an overview on how um, the money comes from us um, by state uh, formula. Um, the override is in there. Our transportation costs are in there. Um, the in-kind cost is going to change, most likely. For now, it's the same amount as we use for this year. That cost is essentially going to go up um, by some percentage. Um, you get the adjusted town allocation, and what I like to say is that that number, that $8.8 .8 .8 is essentially the cash, blank check, however you want to call it, that the town gives us as actual money to run the school district. You see the LEA budget, which is our budget, which is the $10 million. So the difference between that $10 million and the $8.8 .8 that we get from the town is where the... Um, offsets come from um, that revenue offset number should be 1.9 million uh, but you see how that formula translates. forgive my blindness no it's okay. what's LEA mean again it's just a district okay. it's just local educational local. agency is how the state so I just put LEA in there and then um, just so the the two transportations that's the eight the three, so it's regular transportation, special education, transportation, oh, and, and athletic, athletic transportation. All three equal that one number on the other yes, side? Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. Questions on this? Again, this is just taking these numbers and putting them into, um, you know, a chart that kind of gives you the visual as to, you know, how our money is made available to us. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay. And again, at some point in the slides that we present to the town, like I don't even care if we leave it in the town budget, but I, if we can have the 
offsets broken out yeah, and then yep. and then select board or whoever puts that mm -hmm. together, they can do what they need to. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. I, ju I just strongly feel that the more information we put out there, both before and after, the better, the yep. better, or at least, again, the fewer accusations may come our way. It's not going to stop all of them, but. Yep, certainly. Can you make a motion for me? Can you make a motion to table the rest so we sure. can go into executive session? Table for another meeting? Yep, D and E. Okay, I'll make a motion to um, table new business items D and E for our next meeting. Can I have my purple pen back? Sure. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those who are in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. <coughs> we can just table it. Can I vote to enter into executive session under Mass Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Part A3, to discuss strategy with regard to collective bargaining uh, as doing so in an open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the committee. And the committee will not return to open session. Can you can you make the roll? Aye. 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 Aye.